Gangbusters. Gangbusters, presented in cooperation with police and federal law enforcement departments throughout the United States. The only national program that brings you authentic police case histories. just resigned as commissioner of the largest police department in the world, takes over for gangbusters to interview by proxy Chief of Police Hans Halverson of Ray, North Dakota. Commissioner Valentine. Now, Chief Halverson, the official police reports show that John K. Giles was an exceptionally cunning criminal. And uh, deadly, Commissioner Valentine. So you're going to start tonight's case back at Leech Lake. In Minnesota. Yes. There was a tall, wealthy sportsman, a Mr. George William Stubblefield. He had one of the fashionable cottages with a Mr. Barton. And they were there for some bass fishing. Now, in that same section was reported to be the super criminal John K. Giles, like lightning with a gun. At 10.30 in the evening of September 2nd, Mr. Stubblefield and Mr. Barton were in their cabin, alone, looking over their bass fishing equipment. I think I'll try my double spinner with a bucktail streamer tomorrow, Mr. Stubblefield. Yeah? Well, let me see it. The water is pretty warm in the lake, and I think the bass are down pretty deep. It's here somewhere. All right, get those hands up. Both of you. Get those hands up or I'll shoot. Well, we have company. I know you're both rich and you're alone out here in this cabin. I guess he means it too, Mr. Stubblefield. Young man, don't you realize that crime doesn't pay? Uh, I don't want any sermons. I want cash. Well, it so happens we have our hands in the air. Very little money grows on ceilings. All right. You first. Me? Yeah, you the name is Stubblefield. All right. Uh, lower your right hand and pick out everything there is in your pocket and drop it on the floor. It'll get all dirty. Do as I told you. All right. All right. But I only have a hundred or two in my pocket. There's some. And here's some more. I wouldn't try to pick that gun up. Don't you anymore. Hey, don't. Look. Look. My hand. I told you, young man. Crime doesn't pay. The easiest thing to do, Stub, would be to put a bullet through the back of his head and drop him into the lake. Hey, no, no. You can't do that. Hey, let me go, will you? Say, you don't suppose he's that famous gunman they say might be around this section? That John K. Giles? Oh, I doubt it. No. Hey, no. I'm not... Hey, I'm not Giles. Oh, I just pull little stuff. All right. I'm going to count to three. If you're still around... One... Two. <laughs> Streak of lightning, huh? <laughs> That's the best show I've had in weeks. If he only knew, he tried to hold up the famous John K. Giles himself. Yeah, uh, he ought to be wrapped in swaddling clothes. You know, Barton, the feel of this gun in my hands. Well, thank you. Yeah. The one I've been planning. The bank at Ray, North Dakota. But what's the matter with what we're doing now? Two wealthy fishermen, the bass are biting good. You've got three rich dames here crazy about you. <laughs> There's plenty of women and plenty of bass other places. Start packing up, Barton. This little gun, and you and me, are going to pay a visit to Ray, North Dakota. Yeah, I didn't figure this Ray, North Dakota, would be such a busy place, Charles. You ready? We'll take a little walk into the bank. Okay. Wait a minute. Don't huh? turn around. Somebody's walking up and back here. Who is it? Johnson, the chief of police. I checked on the police earlier this morning, and I'm sure. I saw you two men standing here. I was wondering if you wanted anything special. Well, that's nice of you. We're strangers in town. Well, what's on your mind? Well, we heard there was some good bass fishing around. If we could find a place to stay. 
Well, there are a couple of good hotels. Now, my name is Stubblefield. This is Mr. Barton. Howdy. How are you? I happen to be the chief here, Chief Johnson. Now, there's a good hotel right down the street. Where? Well, you go down there to the third street, and then you take a... He knew who we were all the time. He's not dead. Mm. Now, come on. Beat it to the car. Instead of this bank, I know a couple of other jobs we can pull. Then we'll separate until the heat's off. Hop him. Hey, haven't you got any nerves at all, uh, now? Not at a time like this. Well, after we separate, what then? We'll meet again in Nevada. At Reno. Barton, come on up. I'll be right there. Hmm. Hello? Don't you ever stay in your room? Oh, hello, Mrs. Lawson. I told you to call me Betty. I'm giving a cocktail party this afternoon. You've got to come. Well, I'd love to, but I'm playing golf with Mrs. Wood. Oh, that's a shame. It's getting so the divorcees around here won't go to a cocktail party if you aren't going to be there. <laughs> well, that's very flattering, but <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll see you at the roulette table tonight. You will. Will you drive me home afterwards? Hey, what a swanky joint. Oh, somebody just come in? My butler. Oh, you lucky thing to have a butler. Well, now I'm one of them things. I'll remember. Tonight at the roulette table. Bye, my dear. I won't. Goodbye. So now I'm your butler, huh? Oh, sit down, Barton. Yeah, things have been pretty rosy since I saw you last. Really? What have you got lined up? About ten divorces for a relaxation. And the gambling casino for us to take over. Hmm. Say, how about a little first question, huh? Champagne? Oh, no, no, no. It gives me a head the next day unless I drink a lot of milk before I go to bed. And milk's making me fat. <laughs> a slugger ride. I got a whole closet full. I just got in the room myself, as you called. Put my hands hand up, Giles. You too, Barton. Well, police popping out of liquor closets? Police popping out of bathrooms? Any more under the bed? Put the cuffs on both of them. Yeah, oh, the right the the nice reception I get, Giles. Don't worry, Barton. We'll get a little rest for a few days. Then we'll break out of whatever they put us into. Pretty cocky, aren't you, Giles? As cocky as you cops are lucky. No, it wasn't luck, Giles. After you killed Chief Johnson and Ray, North Dakota, you robbed the First National Bank of Genoa. Then you hired a private plane to bring you from Salt Lake City here to Reno. <laughs> well, huh. where do we go from here? You're going back to Iowa. You've escaped from every prison you ever put into, Giles. But you ever hear of the specially built Potawatomi prison? Hey, that's quite a name, isn't it? The Potawatomi... Pot... <laughs> oh, never mind. I'll be out of it before I can pronounce it. And so, Commissioner Valentine, cop killer and escape artist John K. Giles is headed for prison. But we've just started our case. Well, Chief Halverson, we certainly want to hear what happened next. Now, back to tonight's gangbusters case of John K. Giles and Commissioner Lewis J. Valentine. Now, Chief Halverson, cop killer John K. Giles was headed for prison. And Commissioner Valentine, Potawatomi Prison in Iowa was the last word in prison. Giles and Barton were being ushered through the prison corridor. Now, this will be your cell, Giles. And Barton. Quite an iron box, this, isn't it? You're quite an escape artist, Giles. That's why a special cell like this was built for guys like you. If he's building a turntable made of steel, 
There's only one door to it. The floor is steel. Well, in fact, you might try it out with a hacksaw blade. I would, if we had one. Use the one you have hidden in the heel of your shoe. Oh. Hmm. Well, I guess we've got us this time, Giles. All right. Seeing you know I've got a hacksaw blade, I'll try it just for fun. When you go through a door and have metal on you, it signals... Doesn't bite in, does it, Giles? Quite amusing. Another thing, Giles. All we allow you is bunk blankets, overalls, and his living implements, toothbrushes, paper cups and plates, and wooden spoons. Oh, that's perfectly all right. That's enough for me to escape with. Oh, cut it out, will you, Giles? Now, if you two will step into your cell. What do you think of it, Giles? Well, personally... But, of course, it's just my own opinion. I think it stinks. I tell you, Giles, I can't stand it in this cell. I'd rather rip up this blanket and string myself up. If that's what you want. This is the end. If I'm going to do any killing, it'll be the guard. But not me. Well, okay, okay, but if we kill the guard, how can we get him out? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Maybe we could kill the guard and you can mm. kill. Joe, shut up that speaker and take it on the earphones while I take this call. Hello? How long before you come home, Walter? Well, I probably won't even be home tonight, dear. Oh, why not? Well, I'm in a little room in the basement under the special cell. We're determined that Giles isn't going to escape. But Giles is a de escape proof cell. He couldn't escape out of that cell. Well, this Giles is superhuman. We're not taking any chances. We've well, got a microphone hidden in the wall. And one of us stays down here by the speaker every second. Are they still plotting to escape? Giles can think up two new ways every ten minutes. We let them go ahead and then stop them just about as they start something. Walter. Hmm? The baby's got a new tooth. No kidding. That's what I wanted to tell you. Oh, that's well. Uh, I'll call you back, darling. I've got to listen to Giles and Barton. All right, Joe. Switch it back. So killing the guard is out. Maybe somehow we can get into a fight. Be badly hurt. Uh, even then, I don't think they'd let us out of this cell. Oh, I'm going to turn it, Charles. I'm all in. My brain won't work. <laughs> That's when my brain starts to work the best. I don't want to stay cooped up in this cell the rest of my life. All right, go to sleep. Let me do the thinking. Uh, I wish I'd been a Sunday school. What's the matter, Barton? Think you're dreaming? Huh? You all finished? Sure. Say, you done stir crazy, Charles? What? What's the matter? You thought I was asleep, but I've been watching you for an hour, putting water through that little hole in the wall. <laughs> no savvy? What's the gag? The cops have got a microphone in the wall. What? They've been listening for days to every word we've said. How do you know? I sounded the wall. Well, why didn't you tell me? I wouldn't have said some of the things I did. I wanted you to talk just like you didn't know. You were making up all those crackpot ideas to escape. You kept them busy. Their minds occupied. Well, I was doing some special thinking to myself. Yeah, but why the water? Can't they hear us now? Water short circuits wires, Barton. That's what I've been pouring it through this little hole in the wall for. They'll think just something has gone wrong with the amplifier. While they're sending for a radio repair man, we'll do our real planning. Have you thought of something? We're going to start out of here in about two minutes. Oh, listen, you wouldn't kid me. You wouldn't kid me. Look, that. we didn't have anything to work with. But I made something. I chewed up part of a paper plate till it was a pulp. Yeah? Then I chewed up a few cigarette papers. And using that as a plastic, I pushed it into the cell lock here. And I got an impression of the lock. Holy smokes, but what good will that do? Then I used both of our toothbrushes. By rubbing them on the sharp corners of the cell, I shaped them with the right notches and curves. And those brush handles will unlock the lock. Oh, you're crazy, Charles. It wouldn't be possible. Then you stay here. I'm leaving. Just outside in the garage is a blue police car. The door of the garage is steel. But if the car hits it hard enough... I think it'll give. I don't know whether I'm awake or dreaming. Here. Here's the toothbrush handle. Let's get started. The 
you can open that big sunlock with that rig. Ah, oh, it can't be done, John. Wait, it's open. Holy smoke, I'm straight. Come on. You must have died sitting on the Hurry. Just saw you come out of the movies. How'd you like it? Well, not bad. You haven't got a bad little town here. This uh, Concord, New Hampshire don't take second place to any town. You know, there's a lot of excitement in town today. Yeah, why? That criminal Giles, you know, in the papers. Yeah? They found the car he'd been driving in town in a parking lot last night. They sent him to the arm. Yeah, okay, bud. Don't Glad move to... a muscle, Giles. There are four officers who've come up behind you with submachine guns. They'll cut you in two. So that was the store, huh? And I fell for it. Yeah. And we have your pal Cook, too. Remember, boys, this guy killed one chief of police without giving him a chance. Oh! Well, men, welcome to Alcatraz. Giles, step out. You have a nice sea breeze out here, Dodd. Well, Giles, you're supposed to be an escape artist. But never since Alcatraz was built has a man successfully escaped. Not yet, huh? Not yet. It's two miles to the coast of California. The tides run eight miles an hour and can't be swum. The prisoners are not allowed to talk to each other. Prisoners are counted every 30 minutes. Oh, you guys here can count, huh? You're assigned to the laundry. Pressing clothes. We're doing the laundry for the army now. And besides, Giles, a cop killer isn't very welcome at Alcatraz. All right, men. Start marching to your assigned place. Stick me in the laundry with this steam pressure. Let me talk to anybody. Eng? They made a mistake by letting me help load the wash into the army boat with a dock. Uh The guy could get a GI outfit. Pants, shirt, belt, and socks. He might slip on board the boat when it's leaving. Yeah. You can't steal an outfit all at once. You gotta be patient. A year, maybe. Yeah, one thing at a time. Hiding under the dock. And everything must fit me exactly. Or I'd be noticed when I go on board. Yeah. Doctor, 
They will cast them out. You got all aboard, you board? Uh, it's all aboard, Sergeant. Fine. I'm going aboard, then. Get off the boy! Well, they're sailing right off, huh? As soon as we get the gangway up, Sergeant. Nah, it's the stuff. Every trip, the sooner we can get away from this Alcatraz dock, the better I like it. Sergeant, cold? No, no, I just just thought I'd sit down here behind the lifeboat, take a little rest. That's quite a sight, isn't it? Alcatraz fading in the distance. Yeah, I hate that dump. Some of those guys in there are pretty tough babies, huh? Yeah, I guess a fellow in there has a pretty helpless feeling. See nobody ever escapes. Yeah, not like sitting out here with the wind and the sea. Yeah, this is great. Orders have just come through. There's some trouble. Yeah? I just came from the radio house. They just made their 30 minute count at Alcatraz, and one of them cons is missing. Holy smokes. A fellow by the name of Giles. He's a cop killer. Hey, wait a minute. You mean radio says one of them Alcatraz guys is on our ship? Yeah, a fairly tall guy. Good looking. They're going to start a search. Oh, look, guys. If there's a killer like that on the ship, what'll they do? They're swinging now, see? We're starting to head back to the rock. We're heading back to the rock? Yeah. What's the matter? You seasick? Yeah, I guess I'll go over to the rail. What's the matter with him? Hey, you notice how he acted? I don't think he's seasick. Hey, I'll bet you... I don't recognize him. I'll bet you he... Hey, he's starting to climb the rail. That's Giles. Sure, he's going to commit suicide. Come on, let's rush him. Um, yeah. no, 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 no. Well, Giles, okay. Okay, you got me. I'm through. I'm washed up. Yeah, washed up. For keeps. I'll go back to the rock. And die there. <laughs> Giles attempted that escape less than two months ago, Commissioner Valentine. July 31st. And I understand, Chief Halverson, that his failure broke him. He's no longer the escape artist, but a, but a broken wreck of a man. Yes, Commissioner. John K. Giles has no more spirit left. You might call him a, a walking dead man behind those massive walls of Alcatraz. Well, Chief Halverson... This has been a terrific case and just proves again that crime cannot pay. For next week, same time, same station, listen to Gangbusters.